It's good. All right. Well, welcome back. This is part two of 72 Hour Plus Survival Kit that I currently have. Last time we, we talked about um, the clothing, right? So essential clothing and those, those type of items. Now we're going to move on to tools, right? We laugh because tools, <laughs> tools include guns and stuff like that. But bottom line is these are the things that I would include in the kit. And again, I would ask you to reference back to the last video or last whatever you watched that talks about the weight restrictions, right? So yeah, it'd be great to have a chainsaw. You know what I mean? It'd be great to have a lot of cool, uh, like other really awesome stuff. But this is the, the essentials of what I think you need or what I need, okay? So you, you have whatever you want to carry, right? But everyone thinks they can have all this cool shit, but the bottom line is at the end of the day, it's weight, right? It's a weight restriction. So you just, you can only carry as much as your wife or your family member, whoever's moving the, this kit can carry. If I loaded my whole garage down with survival gear, I, I, that'd be awesome, but what can I do to make it mobile, right? This is designed to be entirely mobile to go wherever I need to go. I can survive my house for a long time. Okay, we got plenty of stuff for that. This is mobile, right? So these are the tools, and this is why I stress that weight issue, right? Because this is where the weight comes in. There's two places, right? Ammunition and water is where we get a lot of our weight that builds up, right? And um, ounces equal pounds and pounds equal pain. Anybody that's ever been in reconnaissance knows that, right? So this is designed to kind of streamline the, the, that, that process. So we're gonna walk through, right? All right, hold on, let me have one more sip of Jack Daniels and we'll continue forward. So we have, we'll start out at the top. This is a Mossberg 500 shotgun, right? Not a great shotgun, it's an okay shotgun. It does its job, right? So the way I've got it set up, I actually have it set up for home defense right now, but normally stays inside of this kit. So you have, you know, the first round for this thing is going to be a, um, a birdshot round followed by double up buck and then capped off with the slug. So each one of these rounds has a different purpose, right? So you have double up buck rounds that are designed kind of, kind of to uh, defeat human beings or defeat whatever, whatever they really need to. I mean, it can kill just about anything you want with a double up buck round. That's a lethal round shot at close range, right? You have your, then, then you have your uh, slugs. Your slugs are going to be deer hunter rounds, distance rounds, right? You're trying to reach out and touch them. Yeah, can you defend yourself with this? Yes, but really designed more and more for food purposes. And then you have your, uh, your, your, like your animal rounds here, right? Your game rounds, which is just your normal buckshot type thing, cheaper, cheaper buckshot. That's going to be more survival type stuff, right? So what, the way we do it is we have it stacked out in a belt like this. Everything, is, the more mobile things are, the better off it is, right? Which is why even within this bag, I suggest having a tiny little fold-up bag so you can grab the shit that you need, put it on you, and go. I have one. Don't know where it is. Probably pulled it out for whatever random reason and never, never put it back in. I'm talking like a tiny little duffel that you can just throw some stuff in and go. But keep stuff so it's mobile, so it's movable. Okay? I, I really I strongly believe in that. Right? And then right here, we have about 200 rounds of 40 caliber am ammunition and then a cleaning kit for the weapons, right? So 40 cal is a weapon of choice for me because it's a per perfect defense weapon. The only reason to have a pistol, right? It's Glock 23, 40 caliber, subcompact Glock. Right? This is actually one my wife is good at shooting, but her gun that she carries with her is actually a... Um, a m and shield. It's a 40 cal as well, so we can cross-load the, the ammunition. This gun's really good because it's this is your, your, your personal defense weapon. You're not using this for hunting or shooting. That's why you have this gun, right? So really, realistically, this isn't design. We're not going on like a combat mission here, but you need to be able to actually to defend yourself and defend your property. This gun is phenomenal for that, especially with in ch chambered a 40 caliber round because my wife can shoot it real well and I can shoot it real well and I have the confidence it's going to stop something. I use the... Uh, the Ford Cal Hornaday rounds, I love them. They're awesome. Everybody who knows anything about guns knows that the Hornaday is great. And they make great rounds. So these are the personal defense rounds. They're awesome. Um, so I also have a, I have a concealed carry holster, which is one of the ones that's going to go around you. It's actually going to strap up underneath your clothes, up here but by your chest, right? So you can draw the gun from this side or this side. It's going to be underneath. I recommend you using something like this or having something like this available to you if you're in a scenario like this because. You're talking about if a lot of people are in distress and you're displaced, I recommend carrying a, carrying a weapon because at, that's the point in time when a lot of people are going to be trying to get a little hostile, right? But you don't necessarily want to draw draw attention or draw a threat to yourself um, in carrying a gun. So it's better to kind of conceal carry and conceal carry in a way where people aren't, aren't, aren't going to get a little bit uppity, right? But I also have a holster actually tombstone, from Tombstone, Arizona, which anybody knows about Tombstone knows it rocks. Uh, but this custom made holster from Tucson, Arizona it sits on your side. This is something that if you know you're gonna you're gonna approach a threat, you're you're literally gonna pull this bad boy out and you're gonna actually you're you're gonna engage. Yeah, it's custom made holster. It's pretty cool. It really really draws nice, right? So that's enough to do with all the guns and everything. We'll move on, right? So a hatchet, right? This isn't like for Mel Gibson style throwing and killing people. This is literally a, a utility device. 
I recommend it more or less for the actual, the, the, the hatchet pull portion of it here, more so for the blunt edge here. So it's important to have something you can hammer, right? Because you gotta build shelters, you're gonna have to build stuff. Not necessarily, but worst case scenario. This is designed for worst case scenario taking care of my family. This is gonna be essential for me to be able to pound something in and be able to move forward with it. They're not gonna use the stock of a rifle, right? So you need to have something that's kind of like your all around universal tool. That's also why I have a thick knife here as well, right? I've got a thicker knife that's gonna be designed for gut and deer or whatever else it might need be needed for, but a stronger knife that's gonna be used for utility, okay? So that, 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 that's the reason why I see both these essential. Now there's added pluses. You know, this has like the flint and steel thing to it or whatever, so you can kind of do this kind of thing. You start your fire if, if, if you don't have your lighter. But bottom line is every survival kit should include a lighter in, in, in anyways. If you're relying on flint and steel, then I got it, that's smart, but eh, you know, at the end of the day, you, you, you need to re rethink like the modern, you know, techniques for lighting fire. Uh, but I have it nonetheless. Okay, then you got your compass, standard compass. Okay, compass is only as good as the user of it. So if you suck at using a compass, then don't have a compass because it's not gonna help you out much. This one's got, it's cool, it's got tritium, so it's gonna be, you know, day or night, whatever it is that, that, that you need. Survived some ranger schools for a couple of different people. Survived a lot of ranger battalion rafts and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of a salty little guy, but you know, it works well. So I'm gonna continue continue you using this thing throughout the next few years. At the end of the day, I, I don't even know if I have a topo map, so I don't know how relevant this is gonna be, but I'd rather know where north, south, east, and west is. Um, if in case the fact that, you know, I'm traveling at night and I don't know the stars, whatever the hell the deal is. Compass is essential, right? Tack light. Tack light should accompany any good handgun, right? Um, I have headlamps. We have other different sources of light here. But tack light is kind of one of those things you're going to use in, a, in, a, in, in the uh, personal defense kind of line, right? So it's very essential. This knife has been with me for years. Awesome knife. It's uh, This would be your basic carry. This is to do everything that a thicker knife can't do, right? This is your, your more fine adjustment type stuff. This is not to be confused with what we use for like surgical trauma stuff, which we have over there. Okay, we have a multi-tool. Um, this is a must. If you don't have a multi-tool, I, re I recommend at least having needle nose pliers, right? Multi-tools are essential just kind of taking care of a lot of the random things that happen, right? Whether it's prying open a door, whether it's trying to get a screw out, whatever it is, um, you should have one of these. They're not too expensive. I wouldn't recommend going with the super cheap ones. I'd recommend like a medium grade one. At least this is a Gerber one. Um, one of the ones that actually comes with a lot of ammunition crates and stuff in the military. They have little saws on them, screwdrivers, kind of like some of the weirdly essential things that cut down a lot of other weight, right? So does this replace tools? No. Is it a good fix between you and tools in a survival scenario, kind of try to cut weight? Yes. So Gerber. Um, Move, moving on, so we have VF-17 panel. Anyone who's been in the military knows what this is. Signaling, essentially, right? So you untie it, it's a, it unfolds into a large signaling device. You can signal people, you can, you know, it's a, it's a cry for help, it's a signal for don't come here, whatever you want it to be. I recommend having some, some device to signal that's outside of an auditory means because that kind of gives you the ability to communicate at different levels. Um, then we have our um, survival radio. This one's crank and solar powered. I actually love this one. It's made by Scorpion. Or Eaton is the name of the company. It's called an Eaton Scorpion. Uh, it's really cool. I got, I got it off Amazon. I bought a couple of them. This is the one I really love. And so it's got a light on it. Um, it's also got, uh, you know, it's got the radio function. It's got, and it also has um, the ability to like play music through it or whatnot. But what's more important is it has the ability to plug in your charger for like your iPhone or, you know, your Samsung, whatever the hell you use. Hopefully you use iPhone because you're a modern market citizen. Um, but then the, um, you charge it up. You can literally charge your shit from this thing. So it's kind of cool like that. The, uh, the, the, the solar charger is pretty effective. Of course, it's trickle charged. So it's not fast. But it works, right? And it's got a beer up on the bottom. So America. All right. Moving on. So I got a CB radio here. This one is a 380 WXST. Nothing special about it. It's made by Cobra. Um, it works well, right? Bottom line is brand. Don't know too much about too many brands. I, I, I use a lot of different radios and stuff when, when I was working uh, reconnaissance and stuff. The, the bottom line is this radio will work. So when cell phone networks, all that stuff kind of might go down. Who knows if they go down. CB, ra CB radios, at the very least, you're going to get, get you kind of like a weather channel or whatever's base, right? Right, and there's actually a whole field expedient uh, radio kit thing that I I'm, I have, and I can show you. It's actually in the kit, but to basically allow you to talk extended distances. But bottom line is, this is a second secondary means of uh, communication, right? It allows you to talk outside 
of, um, of a normal GSM network, which I think is extremely beneficial in any type of survival scenario. All right, then we have, also have, which is still in the same CB radio um, network, is a Rhino Garmin um, G GPS. Kind of a piece of shit overall in general, but it actually does its job as far as translocate your location. So you're going to get a good 10 digit grid. So if you need that and you want that, that's important to you, this is going to do it. It also functions as a radio, so it's kind of a twofer. Um, so it's nice to know where exactly you're at in case you're trying to report that, that location up, right? Pen, pencil, paper, and permanent marker, right? I would recommend highly to have this. Paper is just essential. The bottom line is a lot of people forget to put this inside their kit, but if you don't have the means to communicate with other people, i.e. draw pictures if there's, a, if there's a language barrier or jot down something you might hear on the radio in passing, whatever it is, you might be looking for that piece of paper in the ra and you're like, shit, man, I got anything I need except for a goddamn piece of paper. So that's why I recommend you definitely have something like this inside of your kit. And if you're not going to have something like that, have a permanent marker so you can write on just about anything that, that is around you, okay? And it's not going to go away. You should always have permanent because permanent is going to stick around no matter the weather conditions. And bottom line is we're fighting weather, right? At the end of the day, survival would be easy if you could, if you could account for all the elements, right? So batteries, batteries, batteries. I don't think it's a currency, but it could be a near currency. I got a lighter in here too. I don't know why I put it in this one, but um, bottom line is batteries are so essential to, to making sure that the, your systems that you have here are going to function or systems you might come across, across with will function, right? I got a couple of these things, which is kind of a lesson in batteries right here. So these, this is actually a light that I found on Amazon. It's really cool. It's, um, they run off nine volt batteries and they kind of charge themselves to the glow in the dark. I have them in all my cars. I have survival kits in both of our cars too. Go, go, go figure. Um, but they're just like traffic survival kits. And so what's cool about this light is as soon as you, you light it up, you know, you start charging it, but it'll last for a long time, a long time off this nine volt. And it's super bright. It really is. It's super bright. Um, so it's kind of a really convenient light. I keep a couple nine volts, double A's and triple A's are kind of the essentials to have. Um, then we got our chem lights, if in case, hey, you start losing battery power or whatnot, you get your chem lights to kind of low, 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 light the way. It's kind of a backup insurance policy. I got this stupid little elbow light because the army made me buy it a while ago, so why not throw it in the kit? Um, I got, this is a uh, car charger for your CB radio, but it can also be spliced and used to charge just about anything else you might need, which is convenient because I think that in any scenario where you're fleeing a house and using a bag designed to flee a house, um, at that point, you're really reliant on vehicle battery power. So, and whether it's your vehicle, other vehicles you might encounter along the way, if you have a grid go out, whatever the, the situation is that's driving you away from your house, you're kind of reliant on whatever your vehicle can, can provide. So this is going to be an essential adapter. Um, Ziploc bags, have them. They waterproof everything. They're awesome. Uh, hey, spare shoelaces. If you don't have spare shoelaces, you're wrong, man. Because if you've ever been out there and your shoelaces blow out, your shoe's worthless. So... I've got a couple sets of these. I recommend everybody have spare shoes. Zip ties. Zip ties are going to be essential for putting up your shelter, as talked about from last episode, our last uh, snap thing. Uh, but bottom line is, zip ties have a universal function. Now, you can get the more heavy-duty ones to be able to actually detain people or something crazy like that. I recommend this just a mid-grade zip tie in order to care, take care of basic functions, repairing backpacks, uh, you know, fixing clothing, uh, putting up shelters, uh, you know, putting up just basic security. These things can do just about anything you need to in, in a snap. Cordage. So typically what would happen is for cordage, I carry something like we have in our 24-hour pack here, which is, you know, roughly 100 to 200 feet easily. This one might be even a lot longer than that of, of rope, right? You never know why you need rope or when you need rope. For some reason, you always need rope. So always have rope. This is a little bit of cords that I have in, in this kit. And then carabiners. You know, carabiners are the most thing that kind of maintain the longevity of your rope. So the more carabiners you have, the less rope you end up cutting, right? Because you end up tying like bowling knots and stuff where you can tie into your rope. Um, so I recommend having these because they kind of streamline the uh, setup and teardown process of any type of shelter. Okay? Well, that's all I have right now. Oh, no, one more thing. I'm sorry. We have a, uh, so this right here is actually a survival kit for fishing. So this is a good tool. Right, this is for fishing, right? It's a pocket fishing kit. Now, here in the coastal regions, it doesn't really play out as well because this isn't designed for coastal fish. It's a whole different aspect. But in the majority of places in the United States, this is an outstanding kit to get. So not only can you use this stuff to set up snares and everything and, and other things for little wildlife here in like a forester, more forested re region, but also this allows you to catch like a plethora of different types of fish. 
And it's got everything from like a little basic pole design you can put out there and float it and let it sit to more of a, uh, a fly fishing type technique. So really cool. I think I got this off Amazon. It was like 15, 20 bucks. Really, really cool, cool device. I recommend having it because it kind of exp it, it blows up your options because otherwise you're limited to kind of like meat, right? Harvesting vegetarian stuff and like straight up meat, like maybe get some birds and other stuff like that. This kind of gives you that fish option, which for some people like, you know, my, my wife, that might be something she wants to have. Especially if you're talking about longevity, 72, 96, you know, plus hours, you might start to get sick of, you know, squirrel or whatever the hell you're capable of catching. So next time we're going to talk about the actual food, water, health kind of type of stuff you need for sustainment and survival. Thanks.